we are now at ROE 18. We can now issue fire orders to our units. So let's start with the order phase then. First one is a random damage, light damage on BQ. Where are you? BQ is down here in Sarachi. That's the platoon leader there. And we determine light damage. It's a four. That is another night vision damage. <laughs> None of these tanks, <laughs> how are they able to, to see what's going on there? Okay, well the only, the only impact that has is that they potentially cannot move. Uh, well, okay. Let's draw the next marker then for orders. Uh, another one for FA this time. They are in... Calicia. So roll a die. It's a six, which is gun sight damage. Enemy weapon mark is only removed on a one or two when firing directly. And if this continues the way it does, I think we will be running out of markers quickly. <laughs> uh, I want to give some fire orders, please. Let's see, we have... No, oh, come on, it's only a move order too. And it also ends the... <sighs> the order segment. Two ATGMs. A move order. Well, let's give a move order to AQ to go up to Tango 2, please. That's this guy. Um, and that's, that's it. Move those markers onto the ATGM track. I really need fire orders on my supporting tanks now. So let's continue. Even though it's getting risky up there with the ATGMs. Uh, so what is it? No artillery. That's great. Uh, oh, another artillery. Oh, wait a second. No, 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 no. Uh, I will keep them because I did randomly draw them for the next turn, but um, I had two ATGMs, so that, that ends the order phase anyway. Uh, so uh, we go into execution, brother. Sorry about that. Almost missed it. Okay, so the only thing we have is we continue movement to uh, checkpoint T2 and we need to randomly put this guy there, which is tanks potentially and HMGs. Okay, not too bad. Then AQ will move to T2. This guy is staying. Uh, this guy, the squadron leader is entering Calesia and our vehicle, the APC, continues to SK4 on its way to Calesia. Those are all the movements. Yep, those are all the movements. And by the way, this one should have been available already. It's an additional move. <laughs> A uh, QE1 or eligible tank can make an extra move towards a destination. This ability can be used after or before any move order. 5-5. Five, five. Okay, let's check the rules on that. For QL1, extra move. Uh, QL1 or any friendly vehicle of your choice within one position of QL1 can make an extra move towards its destination. This ability can be used after or before any move order. This step does not apply to tanks towing another tank, stun tanks, nor tanks with tracks heavy damage. Roll to move if tank has night vision or periscope light damage. Note that a tank with hull damage can move under this action regardless of which side of the hull marker is up. Okay. And the extra fire QL1 or any one friendly tank of your choice within one position of QL1 can make an extra attack. 
this does not apply to tanks unable to fire due to lack of orders to position or to damage and stun. And I think fire can only be conducted from the overwatch positions. Is that correct? A vehicle with a fire must be in a position that allows, yes. And that's only the overwatch positions. Okay. So I can issue the extra move order to this guy to move up there to get him out of this this bad position quicker or I could bring Nordbat here or well, I haven't given any move order for this. Okay, so let's use it. I spend it uh, to push this guy on with an extra move. They are speeding up their tanks to hopefully get them out of this uh, predicament a little bit quicker. Mm. Would also be quite a mess if they get hull or tracks damage up there. But that's all the movement. We have no fire order still, even though <laughs> we have uh, unrestricted fire under rules of engagement and have given orders to fire at will, but we have to issue them separately to platoons or vehicles. So then we go into the enemy reaction phase. First roll for the tanks. It's a five. So the tank goes hot. I repeat, the tank goes hot. T-55s firing from the hills. Um, and they will be shooting at the lowest priority, and that is this guy, first vehicle, first platoon, EA codename uh, or call sign, and they will hit on a roll of 2d6 on 7 or more. Ouch, that is an 11. So that's a, a direct hit. Uh, let's grab this overview here to see what happens. Direct hit by a tank. Roll 1d6. It's a 1. That is a track damage. That is a track damage. Could have been potentially worse. Let's see, tracks. The vehicle cannot carry out move orders. The vehicle is immobilized. That's a bit of an issue, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, especially as now the ATGMs will also fire uh, from the central position, which we have eyes on, so at least there's a minus one on it, but uh, they hit then on a 10. It's a 7, so they don't hit. But what it does is actually 1, 2, the heavy machine gun will also prioritize them because this it's a, it's the only vehicle with heavy damage and it's also the lowest priority anyway. Uh, they roll a 10 and they need a 9 or more. So let's see what they damage. On a 1, that's no effect on the tank. In order to assign a fire order for the first time in the game, the rules of engagement marker on the rules of engagement track must be in a position that allows the UN force to fire. That is till heavy limited or unrestricted. When this happens, place the fire status marker fire at will side up. Okay, so because we are still on hold fire, this then now means that the vehicle receives heavy damage, it goes up by 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 23. 24 is the maximum. Uh, and then the HMG did fire, and that is another plus one. And now the anti-tank guided missiles will fire this guy here, the leader of first platoon. And they hit on a nine or more, which is a five, so that's nothing. But the <clears throat> rules of engagement cannot escalate any further. They are at 24 at the moment. 
Then we go to artillery. They are still shooting at Kalesia at the moment. First we roll if there is heavy damage. On a 7 there is none. Uh, and which units are in there? FA and QL1, which apparently the marker is still in the cup, so FA goes in. Advance the turn marker rather on turn 9. We have to think about this guy now because he cannot move on his own. We should certainly get someone into the center position here, looking at the markers up there. Um, and we also need to get him to tow the guy to Tango 2. Considering the tank that has damage tracks, what we can do if we get a move or any order basically, we can give this tank, for example, uh, AQ replace that with a towing order. Then it will move into this, even though the stacking limit is exceeded. And then the turn after that, it will basically they will basically move together, and they go to the closest, um, whatever the name is called, uh, contact zone. I think Tango or Kalesia. Let's see, one, two, three to Kalesia, one, two, three to Tango two. So that is a decision up to us in which direction we want to move it or them. However, if we want to gain. Uh, a better outcome <clears throat> we would actually have to tow them back to Zarachi and that comes with a bit of a of a risk so I'm not quite sure if we want to do that I did accidentally draw last time two additional chits and it's I will leave them out because I drew them randomly I realized my mistake and they are not quite beneficial to us anyway so this might go down from here pretty quickly. Uh, it's two artillery markers which allow us to either fire or move a platoon or give fire or move orders. So what I will do, or up to a platoon, what I will do, and this is risky business now, I will give a fire order to second platoon, my support platoon, at Sarachi, which flips all the tanks to their firing site. And even though their night visions and radios are impacted, they can still fire. I mean, they are firing indirectly anyway. And do I want to use one of the special abilities? Yes, I will be using special ability direct their fire for QL3, which makes the indirect fire an automatic success. This, first of all, ends uh, the order segment. So these markers go there. Oh, and because I gave the order, now is the time to flip the the fire marker to uh, fire at will. So that was done on arrowy escalation 24. And then we have to execute moves. This guy can't move because he needs a towing order. Uh, this guy is here, so VO2 will enter Kalesia. Welcome. And that's all the moves we got. This guy cannot move, so we basically can remove this order marker because they will never be able to get there anyway. And this guy currently, AQ currently has an order to move there, but can't. Uh, and we cannot give an additional order here anyway. Yeah, VO2 could give an extra order only if it was at OP North, but it is in Kalesia to potentially draw their fire, which is completely unnecessary given the situation. We don't have the airstrike available, which would be the perfect time for having it uh, right now. Uh, however, what we do get is the, the extra move becomes available again. The, the special ability for QL1 
which is can make an extra attack or an extra move towards its destination which again there is no tank that could do that at the moment because we don't have orders for them to move mm. and I think it, it still has to be adjacent to QL1 right so potentially we would have to actually get them here to sort of facilitate that situation the priority must be now to reduce this so we have implemented the move orders now the fire orders we do fire and I did use the direct their fire ability for QA3 which makes the support fire an automatic hit and we have one in Overwatch L, Overwatch C, Overwatch R so we can now remove markers with the corresponding letter on it. Now I will certainly remove with the R the tank marker here to reduce the, the risk of this guy getting heavy damage. I, I would love to remove the C ATGM but I only can remove one and this one is a attack twice order so I will not do that. I will rather than remove this heavy machine gun marker. Let's see, when firing from an overwatch position, the firing UN tank can only remove an enemy weapons marker if it has the same area location, that is R, L or C, as the corresponding overwatch position. This does not apply to artillery enemy weapon markers. When firing against the first marker on the enemy artillery track, uh, flip it to its no artillery side. The counter will remain this side up for the remainder of the game. Oh, so these guys actually couldn't remove the tank marker. Alright, that was a... a right thing, right? Uh, let me get that back out of the cup. They can only shoot at HMGs, ATGMs and artillery from there. What we can do, however, then, is remove... So let's see, we removed a HG, HMG left. We can remove this one, which is great, because that means no artillery attack this turn. And we still have a, an attack against the right. Can we not attack the tanks? Oh well, only from, from these two positions. Apparently. Uh, which you cannot see. Apparently only from these two overwatch positions. So, Kalisia overwatch right, Kalisia overwatch left. Because those are only, the tank markers are only left and right anyway. Oh, I see. Uh, I think that's all our fire done then unfortunately because it was only two guys firing there is no purpose in rolling the dice to see if we get three ones for the uh, artillery explosion thing so that's done and then it's it's to the enemy and this might be the end of it let's let's find out zoom in like so okay uh, so first thing is the tank status. We still have to check if they go cold again. On a 5 or 6 they will not. It's a 4, which is very fortunate for us. They go cold again. They do not fire. Otherwise this guy would have been in a very bad position. Um, then next would be the ATGM. Uh, hitting on an 8 or more, modified though, so on a 9 or more, and the priority is to unfortunately shoot at this tank, AQ, first platoon leader, and it is a 7 modified to a 6, uh, so it's not an 8, that's not a hit, then the heavy machine gun will fire and hit on a 12. It will however shoot at EA. It rolled an 11. Well that was close, wasn't it? 
Okay, so that's nothing. Then we did take care of the situation that the enemy artillery does not fire. However, that does reduce the rules of engagement escalation level to 23. And that would be the turn. We continue with turn number 10. All right, everybody. And this is the beginning of turn 10. Let's have a look at the overall situation. Whoops, sorry. We have the the three tanks of 2nd platoon in overwatch positions at Sarachi. Um, they all have taken light damage on their night visions. So night vision, none of them has night visions anymore. It's uh, yeah, quite interesting that they are able to hit the enemy nonetheless. Uh, I guess they just see the positions from where the enemy is launching their ATGMs. And the QL3 uh, second in command APC vehicle here that has night vision does like direct their fire and correct it and say well shoot a few meters to the left or to the right or up or down yeah I mean this is indirect fire anyway right so they don't have eyes on the enemy when shooting so it's all directed basically by these guys then we have uh, a damaged tank here in Calicia which has uh, damaged gun sights we have squadron lead and the overall commander here in APC. Then we have two tanks of first platoon on the move. Well, one of them is, is disabled basically, cannot move anymore. They could shoot, so we could get them uh, into an overwatch position potentially to fire at the enemy. But yeah, that's a, a tricky thing to do. We need to get an order to tow them back and I would also love to get some tanks here into these overwatch positions to clear up the the mess of enemy attacks. But we are back into the order phase and then grab the orders cup. Yeah we need we need some uh, huh, we need some move orders right? Oh we drew the golf the golf is discarded. This is actually based on the historical scenario. Uh, moving through Sarachi, I think, or shortly thereafter, one of the tanks did run over a VW golf. <laughs> uh, the civilians weren't harmed by that in that situation, but the, the golf uh, apparently didn't want to make way even though the, the road was narrow and was then run over by attack. So, interesting. I think that causes uh, both shits to be removed. Uh, there, if the civilian vehicle event shit is drawn as one of the two shits retired from play, place the other enemy weapon marker on its track without issuing any orders, then redraw two. So I guess I have to draw one more doesn't explicitly say, but I think that's the logic behind it. Ooh, it's another tank order, which has to be placed immediately. And now we get to draw more. It's a random damage marker, artillery on QL1. So let's see what it does. Roll the one. That is radio damage on the squadron commander. Okay, well, this is... A bit of an issue then because issuing issuing orders will only be possible on one or two good thing is that wheel two is there but I think that I'm not sure if that also applies to the special ability I would think so let me also double check the gun side direct fire enemy weapon marker removed only on a one or two so this guy is basically unable to get into one of these positions to fire oh wow and these guys are basically unable to on their own move up to Calisio or even Tango 2 so I guess the only hope we have is getting these two guys up to Tango 2 well, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, okay. And artillery. Uh, which matches up as fire order. Uh, well, I 
guess I will give this guy a fire order on a one or two. Die roll required. If one vehicle in the radio link has radio damage, the order is received only on a die roll result of one to three, modified by minus one if at least one vehicle without radio damage is at the same position. And by an additional minus one if QL3 is at OPN without radio damage. But they are here, so that's a minus one, and they are here, so that's another minus one. So that's minus two, that's a one, so the order is received. They swap to fire. This is moved here, like so. And I dare drawing again, because I desperately need move orders now. Uh, random damage on GB. GB is one of the guys down in Sarachi. So light damage on a two. On a two would be radio. Oh great. Do I have another radio marker? No, if no more radio damage markers left. Um, Fingers crossed that I remember that JGB also has radio damage. Continue drawing, HMG. And another random damage on FB. And the only light damage they can take, which they do not yet have, they have radio damage and night vision already, is then gun sights. Which only applies to um, direct fire, so that doesn't matter. They are basically blind firing. Okay, anyway, we continue drawing. And here is the second uh, HMG, which ends the activation but also brings back the direct their fire ability. Uh, unfortunately, it's a move oh, what? Uh, to get rid of those guys. I would have to be in the left overwatch. So either I will order this guy to move to overwatch left or work on this towing situation. I think moving QL1 into overwatch left. This might be a bit, big mistake now. Mm, let's reconsider. Um, getting this guy out is mandatory. However, yeah, if he is there, it's likely that the tank goes hot again and hits him and destroys him and ends the game for us. Because we cannot suppress the tanks with indirect fire. And we don't have an airstrike available. Which is very hard to get, mind you. This is real tough anyway. So these go here while I'm thinking about it. Oh man. No, I think, you know what, I think it's more important to have AQ tow this guy. Which might, yeah, expose them to enemy fire now, but that's that. Okay, so that ends the... Oh, that first of all gets at the direct their fire ability back, which is great. And then we go into execution. And in execution, the first thing we do is movement. And we move this guy on top. And then they automatically move to... Um, Look, it, <laughs> no, it's the next question. Do we move them to Calisia or to Tango 2? If we try to move them here, I mean, they get out of line of, line of fire. So that's better for us because a second heavy damage would destroy the tank and we lose the game. Uh, otherwise, it also means that we can no longer achieve tactical victory uh, if, if, 
the this damaged thing is not back the tank is not back in Sarachi which to be fair is a long way to go it would be one two three five six seven eight turns at least I think that's the the better way to do it from a tactical point of view then there is no other move order so now we go to fire and we have the following fire orders artillery ATGM and HGM and I will use the direct their fire ability to make it an auto hit we can hit left we can hit center and we could hit right or we remove the artillery marker what the artillery um, the artillery would be shooting at Tango 2 at the moment and reduce the the deadline by one which I think isn't too bad so let's remove the heavy machine gun marker so that's one for each area that is how it works don't have any direct fire so now we go to enemy Reaction phase. First of all, the tanks. Do they go hot again? On a 4 to 6, they do. It is fortunately a 3, so they don't, which hopefully saves these guys. Next up is the ATGM firing from the center. We have Overwatch, so that's a minus 1 on the die roll. They need an 8 or more, and their priority is they can't shoot here, they can't shoot here, they can't shoot there they cannot shoot them because they don't have a target this is not an exposed position this is one but the ATGM cannot hit it so then we, we should probably have removed this guy rather than the heavy machine gun uh, but I can rewind that um, anyway the heavy machine gun though can shoot at this position and will target the already damaged tank they will hit on a 12 and roll a 4. So that's a miss. Then we go to artillery. They are shooting at Tango 2. There's nobody there. And then the deadline is reduced by 1. So to 17. And we continue with turn 11. 